What is going on guys, it's CH from Homebrew for Life. Hope everyone's doing well. Today, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday, we were talking about my dry hopping hack on the live stream last Wednesday and I said I'd make a video for it, so that's what we're doing today. This is why we're here. Dry hopping is still as popular as it was when I first got into brewing. It's a little bit different now, there's better ways to do it. Back in the day, we'd have secondary and we'd open it up and expose it to a bunch of oxygen and we would close the lid and let it sit for a few more days, maybe a week. Dry hopping is a great method for bitter pale ales, West Coast IPAs. We have not brewed an IPA in a long time, but that's all we used to do. And we would always dry hop. We would always dry hop to add aroma. And when we were doing hazies, it was a great way to create that turbidity, that haze effect. You can buy these new dry hopping items, but they're around $300. And the only problem with that is, who in the hell has $300? But shout out to all those brands because they give me ideas on how to create homebrew for life videos. This is a short video. This is a really short video. No voiceover. You and me, we're just gonna bang it out right now. A lot of people do know the magnet dry hopping trick, but you might be skeptical. Do you really want magnets touching your beer? Will the magnet even fit the shape of my fermenter? And more importantly, will the magnets be strong enough to hold a couple ounces of hops? What magnets do I buy? What bag do I use? Most muslin bags and food grain nylon bags are huge. Let's talk about the magnets. I've been doing a ton of sous vide lately. Ribeyes, filet mignon, short ribs, sir strumming. And I'm taking a big play out of the sous vide game. See, these magnets are wrapped in food grade silicone that are super strong. And at the end of the day, if it can touch my meat, it can touch my beer. And they do fit all my fermenter lids, my anvil bucket, my plastic buckets. You wanna ferment in a corny keg? All we need is just to hold a couple ounces of hops. This is definitely a homebrew hack. This is definitely a small batch homebrew hack. The bag game is just as crucial. Anything you see on Amazon will work as long as it is small enough. These right here, these are seven by 10 inches. Sanitize the bag, squeeze the water out, throw your hops in there, just wrap it a couple times, Tie it off, sit there and have fun, and set, set it, it and forget, forget it. it. If you have a big bag and your hops are just sitting in your wart, that's not dry hopping. You wanna dry hop five to seven days after your brew day when fermentation is done or coming close to an end. I was worried about the anvil lid or any lid that wasn't flat because of the shape of the cone or the dome, but it actually works perfect and it gives you more room to have your pot bag tucked away up there. Flat bucket, you've only got you know maybe a couple inches of space, but with my anvil bucket, it's perfect. This is four ounces. This is three or four ounces. This is more enough to dry hop a five gallon batch and it's holding it with ease. It's super strong. When I try to pull it off, it's gotta take some give. 